Here we are, Denny. Well, hello. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Two times in one week. <laughs> well, we're going to be, we've talked about it for a couple weeks, and now here we are. we got a saddle that was brought in by um, Larissa. If you've seen any of our other recorded videos, there's an access deer pillow that she did. Um, she had the saddle in her barn, I believe is correct, and her kids were using it to ride. Is that what you remember? And paint on, it looked like. <laughs> yeah, there was there's some paint. There's some paint going on over there. So we'll try to talk a little bit about how to get, um, maybe get the paint off if we can. I think we have some saddle soap in here. Probably won't get to that part. We may do it off camera, but we'll talk about yeah, getting that yeah, off of there. That'll be the last thing is the cleanup, probably. Yeah. Um, but we were looking for a saddle that we needed to kind of tear apart and do some do some work on so we can talk about how to do some saddle repair. So I've never done it before, and I assume probably people that haven't been here haven't done saddle repair, or maybe they, they want to hear about it a little bit. But you've got a stack of tools that are over there, and so we, let's talk a little bit about what we have before we kind of get all the way in to it. Um, but if you guys have any questions about saddle repair or need us to go over something or anything like that, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just has to do with tooling, not saddle repair. Then he can also answer those questions, yeah. but let's look at our tools. These tools are just a, kind of a hodgepodge of different tools. Most people can uh, take a saddle apart with, with tools they have in their junk drawer in their kitchen, you know, pliers, a hammer, a screwdriver, uh, whatnot like that. But <clears throat> start off, we have some uh, nail and tack pullers. Uh, we've got some cutting tools. These are just a pair of uh, hoof dampers. Uh, these are lasting pliers. These are cannel pliers. I've got a couple of spikes here, a couple of screwdrivers, a regular claw hammer, uh, diagonal cutters. Uh, I've got a couple of French edgers here and just a couple of uh, straight knives. So what would we need French edgers for? Uh, the only thing I would use a French edger for that I'm aware of as far as taking the saddle apart is to uh, remove the old saddle lining, the old fleece lining. I, I cut the stitches with it, okay. with the French edger. Nice. And so we got some other pliers. So just whatever you have, sometimes it's a hodgepodge of just trying to get the tools to get it apart. So right. leather or uh, saddles, when they're put together, there's some glue that's on there, some other stitching. So I have to figure out nails. How to get all that parts? Yeah, they're all basically put together the same way, but uh, every maker has a few different turns and twists on the way they do things. And this is not a, a, a shop-made saddle. This this is a production-made saddle, and it's it's something that a lot of people wouldn't consider worth doing a lot of work on. But uh, we're going to do quite a bit on it today. And uh, yeah, we're and, going to at least get it, it tore apart. Uh, you can see that. Let's talk about a little bit about the um, different parts of it. So we mentioned them. Uh, people know what area of the saddle that we're talking about. Okay, let's start with the horn. That's the horn. This is the pommel or the fork of the saddle, the, the swells. Okay. Uh, this is the front jockey. This is the seat jockey. So this part is the seat the seat jockey, and our seat jockey, the these parts of it are rolled up. It's rolled up worse on the back. I, you can kind of see it there. I don't know. Rolled up pretty bad there. Yeah. And then we've got the rear jockey. Some people call that the rear housing. Uh, then we've got the skirts, uh, the rigging, the, the D-ring rigging. Uh, this is the fender. So we have the fender part here. Yeah. And this is the stirrup leather. Of course, the stirrups. Uh, this would be the latigo. This would be the back flank billet. We have kind of the same, same. we have another back billet yeah. there and the other part of the... On the uh, other side, instead of a latigo, most people use a, a, a half breed or just a, a an off billet. So then our seat <clears throat> itself, and then... That's the cannel. Okay. That's the cannel binding. The part that's stitched back here is the binding of the cannel. So on our saddle, we talked about there was a split, possibly a split that was on our seat. Yeah, a padded seat. Yeah, and you can repair it, but it just takes a lot more effort to go in because you're pulling this stitching out that's here. That's 
it's a little more involved. It's probably too involved for someone who's just starting to do some saddle repair. You probably wouldn't want to replace a seat because most of the time when you take that uh, cantle binding off, yeah. you end up having to replace it. It's hard, it's hard to get back the way it was. Yeah. And then uh, you can kind of see it on, on here. We have where ours was stitched there. And I, we talked a little bit about probably put some uh, buck stitch in there and stuff. Yeah, pull we'll, this pull this cu this thread out. Yeah, we'll try and just get those threads out and uh, buck stitch it. It'll it'll look good, I think. Yeah, just add something back in there yeah. and that way it's not so hard on us cuz it's, you know, like you said it's a, more of a production saddle than a, a handmade type of saddle. So, and then the yeah. other the biggest part of our problem with our saddle If you go back to that other one, yeah, the lining. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> we have minus, no lining. Minus the lining. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a big part that we've got that's, to fix. Yeah, on that's the most expensive part we're going to do on this saddle, and we're going to uh, instead of using the sheepskin on this saddle, we'll probably use an acrylic uh, uh, Codel type lining, uh, which which works well. Ninety percent of all the saddles made in the country today are use that type of lining. So the last little things on there, we have some rosettes. Uh, just most of our lace that was saddle off, strings, yeah. saddle strings have kind of come off. How long does a saddle generally take to make? If you, I know you did a saddle class. A uh, uh, plain saddle, uh, most saddle makers figure 40 to 60 hours. Uh, fully tooled saddle, a uh, long time, up to 300 hours. So you did some saddle classes, and we just want to make sure that we know that Springfield Leather you can't bring your saddle in here. We don't really do saddle repair, but that's what you used to do at another store across town here and in Wyoming, right? Great. So a little bit of history on Denny. What? How did you get into saddle making? Uh, I was working oil field in Grand Junction, Colorado, and and got laid off in uh, the early '80s, and uh, uh, I'd done uh, just leather work as a hobby and. Uh, there was a saddle shop in town, and I went down and told him I was on unemployment, and I wanted to work for about nothing. And he lit up and gave me a job. <laughs> he said, I like to pay nothing. I like the pay scale, yeah. <laughs> so that's where I started. So how long have you been making and messing with saddles, would you say? Since uh, the early 80s, 81 or 2, I believe. Yeah, so about as long as I've been alive. Yeah, probably. <laughs> So there we go. We have a lot of knowledge that's that's here, and we want to pass that on and kind of impart that to other places, especially with me, with my daughter um, riding horses, and we've brought our saddles in, and we've made some parts for it. So I'm interested in this part, and I know we had some other people that were interested as well. Larissa was interested in it, but she didn't come in, so maybe we can find her and we can get her in here, and she can be a, a studio audience in here. We're trying to get her in to... Uh, do some Friday live videos as well. But let's start tearing stuff apart. Okay. First off, let's get rid of all these accoutrements like the, the latigos and the flank billets. We just want to cut them. The strings, yeah. We just, could just cut them. Yeah, cut them you can just use that or or, we, or even a pair of side cutters. Don't, don't spend a lot of time doing this. You don't need to be uh, real careful with, a, with the parts that you're taking off like that. All right. So we got rid of that part. Yeah. Just throw that out there. Generally, you want to... Oh, uh, we can save. For, have a box for all your small parts. Why would why would we save Why would we save this part? That's still usable. Uh, it's not pretty, but it's usable. It's usable, or we could use it as a template. Yes. To cut a piece of leather. Yeah, you could. cut a piece of leather. That way, we know what part we're using. All right, I won't throw it on the ground then. Yeah. Well, I, that box is just for all your small parts. A lot of saddles that you're going to be working on have a lot of good small parts left, so you definitely want to save them. All right, I don't know if I can back this out. Oh, it's riveted on there. Uh, I think it'll probably come out. Then he says, just get mean with it. Maybe we should have loosened these up before we went going. Well, that's one reason. What is that big spike? You just do whatever you have to do. Here, let's, to get the part. let's turn it a little bit. We can see what you got going on there. All right, I got questions being sent over here. Try, yeah. See if we can see it there. 
You can kind of see what we're tearing, trying to tear apart there. Can you reuse the saddle skeleton thingy? Which would probably be the, the saddle tree. 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 You definitely want to reuse it. If you can't reuse it, then you then there's you, no reason to take it apart. Yeah. If the tree's broke, then the saddle's done. You can replace the saddle tree, but the but uh, the saddle tree itself for a duplicate runs probably four hundred dollars, and then you're going to have to uh, probably replace a lot of parts on it. So. I'd build a new saddle before I replace the tree, unless it had sentimental value to me. Man, this ain't gonna be not sweating work, that's for sure. All right, I got mine off. Well, I'm about got mine. Mine was probably easier. That's why I gave you the hard side. All right, figured that. <laughs> All right, so now we got most of our Okay, now take start taking off all your rosettes, your okay. saddle strings. What I do, I would just get in there and cut those saddle strings because you're going to replace them anyway. So I'll I'll let you do it. But all right, we're going to try to do it. With these with this these is cutters. an educational video. It is. But. Well, and I haven't done it, and you know, people that might be in here might not be doing it. Let yeah. me see that. Let me see that spike there. Yeah, just. It's a matter of just do whatever you have to do to get this stuff apart. Is there parts of the saddle that we want to be careful about, about not prying on or messing up? Uh, well, anything that you're going to try and reuse, but the saddle strings, when I take a, a saddle apart, I don't care if the saddle strings are pretty decent or not, I always replace them. That's an easy something. That, so that's nailed in. Yeah, and that's where you want to use this nail pull. All right. Hopefully, let me turn a little bit. Now we can kind of see there maybe. Just working this, and these nails are pretty rusted in here. Got a bunch of nails and staples and all sorts of stuff. Has anybody had any luck doing any saddle repairs? What's how long? How many saddles would you say you've repaired in your lifetime, Denny? More than I've built by far. Yeah. Uh, the saddle shop, the bread and butter is the repair work. Uh, I've probably worked on couple of thousand saddles I would say one way or another I've done to work on them yeah what's the uh, what's the most expensive saddle that maybe you've built or worked on or most, the most, uh, decor the most decorated or what would you call it, embellished yeah most expensive saddle that I've ever worked on was I was working at a shop in Wyoming and we uh, built a full floral stamp saddle that sold for $19,500 Man. And that was in the year 20, 2001. So you were still out in Wyoming in in, uh, two, in the early 2000s. Yeah. When did you make your way to Springfield? I came out here in 1986. What did I do with that smoke? But I moved back to Wyoming for a, a, a time and, and went to work at, at another saddle shop there. But I had my shop here in town for... A, 20 some years. Do you want that saddle string? Yeah. I'll put it with that other stuff. All right. Fought with that enough. So I got a couple other nails. Go ahead and pull them on the, right. on the front jockey, correct? That's exactly right. What is the best resource to learn saddle working? Volunteering at a shop? The, the best, yes, is to go to work for a saddle maker. That's, that's what I did. Uh, and uh, they used to call it an apprentice, but an apprentice never got paid. Uh, you know, you can't hardly afford to work for nothing anymore. But yeah, uh, but a lot of saddle makers uh, will hire help just to do work, just like you're doing, Tony. <laughs> uh, you can learn a lot by tearing a saddle apart, even that's, if you have no desire to. A, a, tearing one apart is the opposite of building one. Right. So you can see how we put it together. We really. Either that's been doctored or is is that normal? I think we had three staples that's, that's normal. and, and that's normal. two nails. This saddle's never been taken apart. I can almost guarantee it. All right, I got that off. Do I want to take this rosette off? Yeah, now take those rosettes off. Do you off. mind if I borrow a Phillips head screwdriver from you? I appreciate that. Do you like these leather rosettes with on there? Sure. Or but but this is what they call uh, an eight button seat. It has 
two buttons here in the front and two in the back. Most saddles, most modern saddles are six button seats. They don't have this button right here. And you just got to screw there. So the, we're put the oh, seat just, and the front jockey, the seat jockey and the front jockey are one piece. Both of those, both of those are uh, on this front part here. Both of these are normally screwed, screwed on. No, this one, this and this are all one piece on most modern stuff. I gotcha. Uh, and there is a screw right here, but there is still a rosette up here in I'm the with front. You. All right. All right, got that part out. Oh, I got another nail or a yeah. uh, staple that's there. And that's that's kind of a hallmark of a production made saddle they use a lot of staples a lot of staples because it's quick a lot of staples the staple yeah. gun is quick and a lot of them will use ring shank nails which are i also pulled out that was the sh that was the nails i pulled out were ring shank yeah all right here you wanna my tool bench saddle here is kind of running out of room quickly yeah. is anybody Stacy, has anybody been working on any saddles? Nobody's been working on saddles. Everybody's interested in what we got going on here. Yeah. All right, got another staple that's there. So once we get this pulled pulled apart, how are we going to decide what needs to be what needs to be repaired or what can be reused? Uh. Let me just spin this around. You, just, just, you just have to make that decision yourself. If the leather leather is too dried and it it checks when you bend it, yeah. uh, it probably needs to be replaced. So on uh, this, I've got I've gotten all the way back to about the middle of the seat on the back side of what do we call this part? The seat jockey. The seat jockey. Do I need to go ahead and take these yes. back saddle strings yes. out before I get to the other side? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to need your. I handed you back a uh, a. a a poker. What'd you call that thing? A nail puller. A nail puller. What's cat's that? paw. Cat's paw. Uh, yeah. My cat's paw, I work construction for a little mm -hmm. bit. My cat's paw looked a little bit different. Yeah. It probably had an end more like this. Correct. Yeah. Uh, how about a spike? Let's see. Got a question, a couple questions here. What about... Al Stallman's Encyclopedia in regards to resources. That's a good book. It's a good book. Uh, it's a little bit outdated, but uh, you can still build a, a wonderful saddle doing what he says. So what would be outdated about it? Different practices, uh, different tools? Or? If I'm not mistaken, he used what they called an all-leather ground seat. <clears throat> Nowadays, almost everyone uses a metal ground seat. And that's, you know, we're talking a little bit... Of, in front of ourselves here, but sorry, uh, I'm but, not you know, tearing apart fast enough. Well, uh, no, <laughs> it's hard to explain until we get down to that point. Uh, but uh, the metal ground seat actually is a little bit uh, better because it doesn't get soft if it ever gets wet. And, yeah. Uh, All right. You know, a lot of people might disagree with that, but. I've always used a metal ground seat. Well, I know you're not into quite making so many saddles now, and something I know with my daughter watching her do stuff is a treeless saddle. Were they were treeless saddles big when you were when you were doing it? Were they coming in? To... They were they were coming in, but all that stuff is is like fad type stuff. Uh, some of it's good, some of it's bad. Uh, saddles have been around for hundreds of years, and uh, treeless saddles have been around for. 30 years so <laughs> and from listening to the uh you know people that ride them you either like it or you don't on that trailer yeah. saddle yeah. well you can use them for some purposes and for some you can't if you ever tried to rope out of a trailer saddle you would be a lost cause uh as for pleasure riding they might be great they might be great do you have to have experience with horses to make saddles? It's better if you do. Why would you say that it's why would you say that it's better? If you've never ridden a horse, uh, you don't know what you're trying to build. Yeah. It's like if you've never worn shoes, it'd be pretty hard to build good shoes. 
Sorry, I threw your spike on the ground. All right, got that side taken apart. I didn't miss anything on that side, did I? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. There's still time yet to mess up. Yeah. You never know what you're going to run into when you start taking the saddle apart. And expect to get dirty. Because, I mean, this one's got a lot of dust yep. built up on it. But Yep, repair work is, is the least fun part of the... Uh, a saddle shop, I'll say that for sure. But it's also that's like why they I stick said, the new your... people. They stick new people on that part. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you there. But uh, just someone who makes saddles on their own in their own little shop, they don't have any help, and they do all that work themselves. Uh, I had help a few times, but uh, for the most part, my shop was a one-man shop. And you worked at a, a local place here in Springfield and did saddle repair on there. Would you say mm -hmm. you did quite a year repair there or quite more when you were out in Wyoming? Oh, I did more saddle repair in my out of my own shop than I did in, in Wyoming. Did you have a shop here in Springfield mm -hmm. before you even went to the a big box? Or you yeah. is that what you're talking you're... No, I was never at a big box. I got gotcha. you. Never at they, they I never made to production you. saddles. I got gotcha. the, you. The local store that I'm speaking of, they... They brought you. They brought the saddles to you, or said, "Hey, we had a saddle for you to do." Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's the way it, it is most of the time. If if you hang your shingle out and say "saddle shop," people are going to show up and say, <laughs> "Hey, I broke this stirrup leather and I need a new one put on," or whatever. What do know. we have? What do we have here? It looks like got an extra piece of something there. That's part of this padded seat that wasn't taken off yet. No, it yes. looks like it was red something or other. Yeah. Probably nice. Red split leather, probably. It looks like it's got some pattern on it. Maybe it was a snake print or something. What's the best kind of leathers to use for a saddle? Oh, saddle skirting, by far. That's the reason they call it saddle skirting? Yeah, because <laughs> it's heavy. Uh, most people, if you've never had any experience with a saddle and you pick up a piece of skirting leather, you say, oh my gosh, how can I ever work with this? Because it's, it's very thick. You know, most of it is uh, 12 to 16 ounces, depending on what, what you want to make, you, how, what kind of a saddle you want to make. You know, and that's, that's thick stuff. It's very stiff, hard to work with. But when you're building a saddle, you very seldom do anything while the leather is dry. It's almost always wet, and that makes it pliable and, and yeah, easy just, to mold. You can see, switch on that, switch back to that there, Chad. Ooh, maybe, maybe if it'll focus. Still got a nice kind of color of veg tan. It's hard to see, but you can still kind of see the veg color on there. All right, looks like I got one more staple. All right. Okay, now you've got to lift this up. There's probably oh, I see a nail more or a staple or two in here. Staples in there. All right, set some of those over there. Put that in my back pocket. I might need it in a minute. There you go. So, what are all these staples going into? They're going into the saddle tree itself. Uh, this one, I haven't looked at it, but I think it's probably a fiberglass saddle tree, wood covered with fiberglass. Uh, some of these uh, less expensive production type saddles are made on a what they call a, a plastic polymer molded saddle tree. And I assume on the other side of this saddle I have these same staples there. Yeah. You ever taken one of these tools to the face when you're trying to pull something out and it slips? Uh-huh. But that's exciting. Yeah, you only do it once or twice. <laughs> then figure out how to keep your face out of the way? Yeah. You were just waiting for me to do that part, and then, <laughs> then you would explain, <laughs> teach yeah. that, hey, you might want to keep your face out of the way. Let's try it. Throwing all the tools everywhere. Yeah. All right. Actually, I may be wrong, but I think if you would take your... Uh, your little cat's paw deal. Nice surgery. <laughs> Is that loose now? I think yeah. so. Yeah, that's loose. Nice. So, let's see, we pull that part just 
part there. When we get all these parts off, and we aren't going to show you this on camera, but we're going to dip them in, in water. A water bucket will be fine if you've got a, like a laundry tub at home. That works great. But just soak them in water, all these loose parts, and get them wet. And then if you uh, take a piece of plywood, put it on the floor and put these parts on there, and put another piece of plywood on top, and a five-gallon bucket of water, it'll flatten everything back out. So we want to flat. We want to flatten all our parts back out where our where our yeah, side that, jockeys we'll are rolled up. We'll just have to do that by hand on those side jockeys. All right. Now that I got that other part pulled away a little bit, what were you trying to get me to use here? Where did my cat's paw go? Yeah. It's in one of these pockets here. No, did I set it back over there? Did I set it down over there? Oh yes, you did. Got a lot of time to just get in front of it get underneath the yeah. leather part instead of on top of trying to just get in there. All right. Right. I'm going to use the leather to pull, give me some space. All right. Yeah, this is a fiberglass covered tree. And all the fiberglass is about done for. So even when we get all the way down there, we might get in to see the, the fiberglass, the tree. Would you get to this point? I mean, it's already a production saddle, so you're probably not going to repair it anyway. Well, we're going to go go through with this. If somebody no brought if what. somebody brought it to you, if you still had your shop and somebody brought it to you, I would do two things. First thing I would do would be grab it right here and push. If there's any give right here, you can see it give. The tree is broken there. Bring it up here like this and squeeze it together. And you can see if the fork is broken here. If there's any give this way. That's a dead giveaway. Yeah, so if you've got broke. big movement when you squeeze it together this way or squeeze it together. Yeah. Okay. Then it's broken. Then, it's, then there's no there's no use well, of tearing it apart other than you, if you just want to have fun tearing yeah, it apart. Like I said, there, you can put a new tree in a saddle and have a tree duplicated. But it's, it's very expensive. It needs to be uh, an exceptional saddle to begin with or one with lots of sentimental value to you. Lots of sentimental value. All right. All right. You got that. But see, we would just wet this and put it on the floor. I use a piece of plywood. Straighten everything out. Put another piece of plywood on it. Set a yeah. five-gallon bucket of water on it. And it'll yeah. Straighten it back out nice. So you're you're putting this. You're wetting this and then putting it. So the ground would be underneath it, and you'd put right. your piece of plywood on top. Right. Didn't you put anything else to kind of weight it down or hold it? That's that five-gallon plywood? bucket of water. Five-gallon, the bucket of water that you dipped your leather That's, in. Yeah. Or dumped on that, your leather. That'll work good. All right, we'll set that on yeah. the table over there. We used to call it a press. That's a pretty impressive name for it. Uh-oh, it looks like I But it's it. just the floor and the plywood and a Ooh. bucket of water. You missed a staple over here. Yeah. You've also got to get these off. We haven't got to that part yet, though. No. Okay. All right. So this part doesn't, this only comes that far? Yeah. Because I'm connected to the rest of yeah. it? Yeah. You'll come up like this. This is your ground seat here. And this one, they've used felt and all kinds of things. And uh, it's probably got a piece of fiberglass that's that's right here. But uh, When we go to put this back, could we add padding underneath there? No. You don't no? want to do that. That's... I would leave that like it is. All right, so we don't want to go any further than that. Yeah. So we have, uh, what did we say, these these parts here to take off? Yeah, those front jockeys. All right. Oh, there's spiders in this one. All right. And there again, I would put those under the same piece of plywood with the, with the back jockeys. So we're going to flatten these back. We're going to flatten them out, but when we go to put them back on, then no, we'll wet no, them again to mold back around? No, we won't need to wet them. Okay. They'll, they'll tape up good. All right. And it's not going to hurt veg tan leather to wet it a couple Water times. Water does not hurt vegetable tan leather, but you need to put some oil back in. Okay. So if you if you water it down, or after we get done watering these down, we're going to oil them back up. Yeah, we'll oil it and what put kind a coat of, of saddle soap on it. And any kind of vegetable oil, neat's foot oil is is good. Olive oil is great. That leather's ripping right there. Let's see if I can get underneath them. A little bit dry underneath here. All 
Any other questions coming along our way? Just watching me struggle? Yeah. All right. All right, any other tips here, Denny? You make this go well, faster? Let me see. Where's your, your cast ball? Cast ball. There you are. Got to bring in the expert here. Maybe I was just trying to be too gentle and didn't want to yeah. tear the leather. This might tear, but it's underneath everything. We aren't going to lose much. All right. You broke your cat's paw. Broke Better you than paw. me. It's going to happen. You got too wild with it. Shouldn't. <laughs> All right, now we're going to get... That's okay. off. There you go. You need that piece for you. Put that yeah. back on your tool later. Weld that back on. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can get these staples out of the way. Probably can't. Are these going to be in our way? We need to have them out of the way. Here. That's where we can use our handy dandy. Our big lasting pliers. Well, there's half of one. All right. There you go. Now. Now. Everything's off but the skirts. We want to get these fender or fenders and stirrups out of the way? Yeah, you can do that. Just unbuckle those and take the stirrups off. So these are buckles, and I know we talked about when we put this back together, there's something else you can put on here instead. We're going to put on some Blavins buckles, which are a quick change buckle rather than a tongue type buckle. Those have been in there for a minute. Here, I got another little set of trick. little trick. All right. Push your leather all the way up through, and then pull it back out. Now, just, you can just uh, you can just pull those stirrup leathers out right, because it. they just run across the tree. They're running all the way across the tree. Yeah. They're put together with two rivets here. And they used to have a couple of rivets down here. So we'll pull this, we'll keep the fender. Yeah, and just put a new pair of stirrup legs. But if we needed to, we could just use that fender as a pattern and just put, even if we did, uh, you know, like a, a flesh. Mm -hmm. Didn't do any tooling on one. Giving you trouble? No, ju just maybe a little bit. I'll tell you what. There it goes. It was just one little hump that was in the way when it's just been sitting there so long. What you gonna tell me? We could wait till we get the fender off, and it probably come off a little bit, or the skirts off. All it right. Might come off easier. All right. The skirts, they've got one staple back here that we're going to have to take off. Okay. And then we'll turn it upside down. All right. What's this dude here? This just hold my rigging yeah, that's, together? That's, yeah. It's called a rig hobble. A rig hobble. Hobble. It just hobbles the front and the back rigging together. So they don't get away from each other. Yeah, so they don't spread like this, of course. Those have seen better days. I think everything we got going on here is being seen better days. Yeah. That's why we're in the situation that we're in. Man. More staples. All right. Now let's just turn it upside down. Okay. 
Now most saddles have a screw up here in the front, right? One on each side right here in the front. And then maybe a couple of nails through here. They'll very seldom have these staples back here, but this saddle does, so we've got to contend with that. All right, I kind of got those staples pulled away. All right, now you got to do the same thing to this side. They got to come off together? Uh, let's see. No, you can take one skirt off at a time on this because they aren't tied together at the back. So normally on the back, they're laced together? Yeah, they'll be laced together in the back. Got one staple right here that doesn't want to come loose. Try to see if I can break this one. See if you break this other cast paw. I'll let you do that part. That way you're breaking cast paws and not me. So in a lot of this, it's not really something that you need to see. It may look different on your saddle. Apologize, we can't get in here with all sorts of camera angles. Well, we've got okay. a bunch of... Yeah, we've got a bunch of staples up there. Let's get these out. Well, that works out well. Rusted, broken. It's a good reason why you keep your hands out of the way, I see. aggravating normally we don't put put them up here put these staples you say so far up here don't I never put any staples on the bottom and this where it comes into riding horses would be beneficial to you right yeah well, I mean you gotta would you want these staples poking in your back as you're riding along <laughs> yeah there's some shearling there but that's a hard spot you know, that's a hard spot that's going to be poking in that horse's right. back. Right. And I think that's what you were kind of meaning by it, it helps. Well, it, it helps to know how a saddle should feel, how it, how it should sit on a horse, for mm -hmm. one thing. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff holding this together. Man, that just keeps on going. Oh. I feel it starting to let loose. Oh, it's tucked in a tree back there. Yeah. And this, we got some staples up here. You want to flip it back over the yeah. other way? Yeah. All right. Let's see, let's turn it this way. Maybe we can get it on that camera there. Yeah, this rigging here. All stapled on, and most of your better saddles will be uh, there'll be some screws in there. That's where it comes to just find a way to get stuff out. Yeah, do whatever it takes. We have anybody that's thought about doing saddle repair? Maybe this scares them off even more. Well, so did you did, were you riding before, Denny? Oh yeah, I've had horses all my life. I'm gonna move my hand out before you poke me with that. So is that what made you want to get into the saddle repair, well, yeah. saddle, le leather working? Yeah, more or less. I figured if I was ever going to have a good saddle, I was going to have to build it myself. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Get those out of the way to get to the next. You got that bigger spike, that longer spike? You can use this one if you want. Yeah, that's okay. the one I'd want. Then he says, just get out of the way, kid. Let me get these staples out. Now then this one should be just about ready to come apart. One skirt off. 
Man, that's quite a deal. Yeah, it's these kind of saddles are. I guess that's why you kind of why it's called a skirt. The tree normally fit in there like that. Uh, like a skirt around. There's it. there's so many different ways. Most most this is called full double rig saddle. Most of them that rig with D rings do not go down in the tree like that. The tree the or down in the skirt. The skirt is underneath. And the rigging just sets on top, but this one isn't like that. So. <laughs> it's another way to build them, yeah, I suppose. Most end skirt riggings are like this. But. All right. Anyway, the other side comes apart the same way. It's just the same just way. Grit your teeth and do it. So I think we've got enough parts to kind of look at it. What we're gonna, yeah. what we need to repair. So let's just we'll just look at this one side we have apart. Okay. This, of course, we're gonna have to reattach this. Uh, by rights, we ought to, we ought to put a new piece on here and a new rig hob. The back the, the back, back rigging I think is fine. Uh, you know there won't be a lot of strain on this. You've got to, you've got to make a judgment whether the saddle is worth putting too much effort into or too mm -hmm. much new material. And you know this one I'm I'd say we do need to put this on. Okay. Because this is what holds the saddle onto the horse, you know. Yep. That's the life of the saddle is the rigging. So we'll put new rigging, uh, new rigging on the at least the front, the front rigging. Yeah, new rigging or new rig hobble. Uh, straighten these seat jockeys out, pull the stitches out of this, and rebuck stitch it. So is this as far as we're going to pull this part off? Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't see a reason to pull off the the cantle binding on this saddle if it was a, a really nice saddle a really good saddle i would i would do it and put a new padded seat in it but, all right so when we get going we're going to flat we'll probably flatten these down yeah just and all you got to do to do that is just get them good and wet and then yeah. just shape them so and even though it's dry right now once you get it wet it's going to it'll, start it's going to soak that it wet, water and it'll it's relax gonna... itself and you can shape it however you want so we'll the, shape these back down um off camera and kind of do that process off uh off camera yeah and the same with with the skirts we'll put the skirts in a press the same as we're, we're going to with the uh the jockeys you know? okay get them good and wet and put them under a piece of plywood with a weight on top of them and, and uh, straighten them back out. That way they won't be all curled up. They'll just be straight and flat. All right. So what do we got to do to get this part taken care of? This? We, the same? Uh, oh, well, I would just take it after it was uh, after reshaped, I would just take a French edger and go along and cut these stitches. Yeah, let's see. Try to if you see like I'm doing, I, I'm not going to do this whole thing, but that's... And this is where the um, shearling, there yes. should be shearling here. Yeah, shearling or or that uh, acrylic fleece, okay. whatever, you know. And that's what should be there, and we're going to do that after we flatten them back out? Yes. So we'll flat, yes. <clears throat> we're going to cut this loose, and we'll flatten it back out, we'll put the shearling back on, and then it'll be ready to put... Yeah, you'll have to put the shearling on and stitch it, and then it's ready to put back together. But I guarantee we won't use these staples. Guaranteed we're not going to use those staples. <laughs> we won't use staples at all. All right. So we'll pull, we'll pull that rest of that part there. What yeah. else we got to repair? Uh, the new stirrup leathers. New stirrup leathers with blevins. Yes, with the blevins buckles. We're going to use the same fenders. I don't see any reason to build new fenders. For they still them. seem like they have pretty good flex in them, not too yeah. dry. Yeah. We'll just oil them up, clean them up. Once once we straighten everything back out <clears throat> and get it get it oiled up, it'll it'll have a completely different feel to it. Yeah, and I don't think that you can get that on. You may be able to see some paint spots on there. We'll take some. How do we get that off? We're going to put like mineral spirits on there. You want to put no, mineral spirits on I your leather? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, that because that'll dry it out even more. So yeah, I I would just use glycerin saddle soap and uh, scrub it. You don't want to scrub it so hard that you take the the grain finish off of the leather. Yes. You know, it might just be there. It might be part of the saddle. Uh oh, the paint that's the uh -huh. paint that's kind of there. Yeah, we can get some of it will come off for sure. Yeah. Um. So we're just this the glycerin saddle soap. That's the the bar 
the bar saddle soap. Yeah, we have it in bars, and uh, we also sell it in a liquid form. A spray, liquid, bot, a spray yeah, bottle form. Liquid's easier to use than the bar. What are you going to scrub? What are you going to scrub it with? I'll just use a piece of uh, sheepskin, piece of shearling. Okay. And I know my daughter uses this, and because she uses the saddle soap, but she, what's the what's the key? You got a new piece of shearling that you're going to be using. What's the key that you need to do with your shearling before you start working well, with it? If your shearling's got a pretty long nap on it, you want to clip it a little bit shorter, where it's it's not just long one inch hairs on it. Yeah, so trim it down a little bit so you're not yeah. having. Otherwise, you're going to be <laughs> leaving a lot of shearling kind of yeah. laying around everywhere. Yeah. What's some other? Uh, what's some other? Things we might run into. I'll tell you what, uh, you can run into anything. You, this is uh, the one of the worst case scenarios, though, this saddle right here. Yeah. I mean, the way it's put together, it's just hard to get apart, you know, and it it's, I can't say it's been mistreated. It just hasn't been treated at all. It's just been laying around. And sometimes you'll, you'll get those barn finds, those barn find saddles as well. And uh, people want to do them even you see people will do a saddle as a decoration or even restaurants have saddles in them as as decorations and you know redoing that saddle and and put it somewhere to sell you know if you get a, a free saddle somewhere and you just do it do it back up just a little bit to sell it at a thrift store or something like that for home decor yeah you can make a couple hundred yeah, off and, of it and something like that you don't need to tear it completely apart just kind of wet it up and reshape it that and uh, put some oil and a little saddle soap on it and it, it'll look good all right well there you have it that's what that's what we got done today we got it torn apart got our hands a little bit dirty had to get denny in there and show me how it's done <laughs> <laughs> well that's the just, apprenticeship part well it's just a matter of, of gritting your teeth and doing whatever you've got to do to get things apart you yeah. know you know and some pieces of leather you've got to be careful or, or you'll tear them you know and i think a lot of it is those those parts that get down underneath that you can take apart a little bit because it's going to be covered up with a with a different piece of leather on top of it so you may not have to be quite yeah. as nice to yeah. them. And like you said, some of the parts we're just going to remake. Yeah. But if you guys have any other questions about it, leave them in the comments below or that you would like to see uh, as we move forward forward with this. Um, we're going to try to get it, everything flattened back out. One of the sides we'll put the shearling on. Do you use a sewing machine when you put the shearling? Oh, yeah. You can hand stitch them if you want to. But... So we'll have, for the next video, we'll do one side of it and then we'll... Um, repair the other side of the shearling and we'll make our other parts as we go along and get all the parts kind of made for it and then we'll have one last session of this of putting the saddle back together can't guarantee that it'll be next week rusty and kevin may have a video that they want to do but we'll let you know whenever we we are ready to move along and repair the next part of this saddle now that we tore, have it torn apart then he's going to want to put back together so we can get it out of his area <laughs> but thank you guys for joining us um, if there's any other videos that you like to see on this um, SLC live, let us know. And then on Wednesdays, Denny, we've been doing your tooling classes. Uh, we started that this week, and I know you have classes here if you're around the Springfield area. Every um, second week, so this will be the second week of the class, and then so yeah, the not class. this weekend, but the next weekend, you'll start another series. Yes. Th well, no. <laughs> There's this month has five Saturdays in it. The Sat the classes actually run uh, the first two weeks of the month and the second two weeks of the month. You know, uh, like the first and second Saturday is one class. The second and third Saturday is another class. Unless there's five Saturdays. Yeah, then then there won't be a class on that weekend. So there'll be one and two and then four and five? Exactly. So we'll skip three and give Denny a weekend off? No. Oh. No. No weekend. We'll do off one and two and three and four. Oh, okay. And then we'll have the fifth one off. Right. Okay, we still get a we still get a weekend yeah. off then. And of course, uh, during holidays, you know, we don't have classes those two weeks because everybody wants to go somewhere. So on Wednesdays, we're doing that 30-minute sessions or so. We did the first one, kind of introduced the tools and went along with that. This next time, we're going to start in and doing the project and do the swivel knife and maybe get into some beveling. We have some in different steps of the process and kind of explain to you guys how it goes along. And then after we get done with the beginner session, we'll move into an intermediate and we'll do a different project and, and uh, get everybody up to speed on tooling. Yep. Anything else you got? 
That's all for me. All right. Well, don't be scared of leather. That's the, that's the biggest thing. Don't worry about messing it up. You can you can get another piece or you can cover up your mistakes that you have. But yeah. thanks for joining us. All right.